welcome to EO Talks, Eastern Oregon's very own talk show, only here on EO Alive. Hey, Eastern Oregon, thank you for joining us. And today I am with Lisa Leidendorf, who is a part of Housing Matters. And Lisa, I will let you tell us how you're involved in Housing Matters and what kind of, what's your role there. Okay, great. Thank you, Brent. Um, so as Brent said, my name is Lisa Leidendorf, and I am a social worker who works here in Union County. I work with the Northeast Oregon Network, otherwise known as NEON. That's how many of you may have heard of it. Um, and NEON is the sponsoring organization for the Housing Matters Union County Coalition. We hold the grants and write the contracts and um, help support that coalition with organizational infrastructure. So my role is I'm the representative from NEON to Housing Matters. I work with the staff and the executive committee and provide facilitation to the larger group, um, do grant reporting on behalf of the coalition and that kind of thing. Great, thank you. So tell me, let's talk about housing in Union County. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a shortage and there's been uh, recently, the uh, city of La Grande did a feasibility study. It was ordered by the state mm -hmm. to do that. And and uh, Housing Matters, and I don't know if you personally were a part of the, the folks that were a part of that, but tell me or tell us what, what were kind of the results of that study, mm -hmm. uh, the evaluation of housing in uh, the La Grande area. Yes. So as you as you pointed out, for uh, the, the state of Oregon um, passed uh, a law mandating a housing needs analysis, as well as provided some funding to hire consultants to do it in cities in, all throughout Oregon over the size of 10,000 residents. So um, La Grande City Council and, and much of this was led by Mike Boquest, the city planner, conducted a fairly in-depth housing needs analysis. Um, many people from Housing Matters uh, participated by providing information, sitting on committees, um, attending hearings. That housing needs analysis is now completed. Um, the, the next step is that the city is, is holding meetings um, to try and talk about incentives for developers, and that's actually a committee that I'm sitting on. Um, one of the things that the housing needs analysis turned up, which isn't really a surprise to anyone who lives here, is that there is a lack of housing at all levels. It's particularly severe at the affordable housing level if we're talking about affordable rentals um, for working families who um, may be lower income or even middle income um, that are not yet ready or able to buy. Um, but there's also really lack of affordable housing for folks who are buying at middle and upper incomes um, as well. As a matter of fact, houses are moving so fast on the market um, in terms of selling that that takes houses um, out of circulation for rentals. So we have a lack of rental properties like apartments and such as that, but we're also seeing houses that used to be rentals really coming out of that rental stock because um, there's so much demand and so little supply. And this is really happening all over Oregon. It's also happening in our other small communities in Union County. Um, we know this anecdotally, even though the housing needs analysis studies haven't been done there yet. So for folks that might not understand and, and help me if I get this wrong, correct me, but the part of the issue is that uh, middle to higher income folks, some who professionals that move into town, they're looking for a certain style of home. They're not able to find that. And so many times they're buying mm -hmm. under or at a lower level than what they normally would, which then lessens that inventory. And that essentially cascades all the way down. Right. And I would imagine it also in prices, it increases the rental of, mm -hmm. of the rent price of even the, yep. the lowest price yes. units. And yes. so then that shortage uh, causes the rental prices to be up. And then for those uh, low income housing needs, they're just not even available. Did I express that correctly? 
Yeah, so so two things happen. One is that many people are priced out of the market, um, low income, but also what we might call lower middle income. These people are most of these folks and families are are working full time, um, but they're priced out of the market. Um, and and we're finding that it that there's also no supply. So even if they could find something that they could afford, those are snapped up right away, um, they're a long waiting list. So so there's affordability and there's supply both. Okay, so let's kind of shift to, because uh, uh, our parent company, company Brent Clapp Productions, uh, we did a production for specifically for housing manors mm -hmm. with some grant uh, money that you guys went after. And that essentially was to increase the awareness of how anyone at any time, particularly if they're trying to start over or if they've had a misstep or something, they can find themselves uh, short of housing. And right. so let me, let's show that video real quick and then we'll Great. talk about it here in just a minute. To the landlord that gave me a shot on a house without a rental history and bad credit. To the employer that gave me an opportunity to prove myself. To the WIC nurse who helped me learn to shop and feed my family. To the banker, who walked me through having a checking account and paying bills. Thank you. So Lisa, that story actually came from one of our Legrand residents who mm -hmm. actually was starting over uh, mm -hmm. as we were exploring how to do a video, that story kind of came about and it was so compelling of someone who started over almost from nothing and earned their way back or found their way back, you know, found a job, found a house, and you know, rented it first uh, with a struggle, and then and then eventually ended up purchasing a home. And so, how how common do you see that story happening here in Lagrand or Union County? Well, I think that's really pretty common. I mean, I look at I would use sort of two terms. One is starting over, and the other is starting out. So some is people like in the story who are starting over, they may have had missteps in their life, they may have gotten bad credit somewhere along the line or had instability in jobs um, and, and really sort of working their way back through that stability. Um, the other starting out is, you know, think of someone in their 18 to 25 year old range 
who's um, just entering the job market. And, you know, if you look at sort of the wages for starting out jobs that you might find here in our county, and then sort of compare that to um, trying to get into a rental or trying to purchase a home, uh, both of those things are, are really a key factor. And one of the reasons we focus on that pathway to home ownership is that home ownership, for children who grow up in a home that is owned by their parents, they have much better outcomes in terms of lifelong health, they complete higher education levels, they typically have much higher income earning potential. So um, there are a number of things about the stability of owning your own home and having that equity investment that goes into owning your own home that that's um, really provides a good base um, for families. So it's, I think it's, it's really, um, I think it's very true that, that, that is what a lot of people want. You know, they, they want, um, first of all, they want a stable place to live. Um, but then after that, they really would like to be able to move their way into home ownership um, for that stability for themselves and their families. So I, I think that we see that that's a story that's far more common than people think about, whether it's either starting over or whether it's starting out. And that, and that totally makes sense. And I, I, I understand that. So let's talk about housing matters specifically. You mm -hmm. know, how does that, you know, the, the video that uh, we helped you guys create was really to increase the awareness and help people to understand that they might not be in housing, a housing bind. There's a term for it, underhoused, or I can't remember. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they they might not they might not have that struggle, but you know, people's our lives change, and you know, many people are literally one paycheck away from mm -hmm. uh, being housing housing burdened. I think that's the term. <laughs> yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and and uh, I I went through some things in my life. You know, uh, it's been almost twenty years ago now, but. You know, I mean, there was a period of time where I spent a month in the Greenwell Motel and mm -hmm. it was it was a struggle for me. It really mm -hmm. was. And and I and I there was a there was a part of me that like realized how fragile my yeah. life was, how yeah. fragile the path of my life is. Mm -hmm. So and in, in the video is to help people remind them of that that yeah they it's easy once you you're you're involved in life and you you have a home and you have a car and you're you know i mean you're just kind of swept into life and it's hard to sometimes think outside of yourself so how 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 does housing matters plug into that how how can someone get help from that you guys have a website uh, talk about maybe how practically how housing matters is okay. a part of helping that problem so housing matters is um we're a coalition a group of people who are uh maybe they work for an organization in the community that's concerned with housing needs maybe they're a concerned community member volunteer who has seen this in their neighbors and friends maybe they are someone um who has experienced or is experiencing experiencing housing insecurity themselves. So we're, we're a whole wide group of people in that sense. And our goals are, we have several goals as a, as a way to help in the community. So one, as you talked about, is to really address this issue of who are people who are experiencing housing insecurity. And really our tagline on that, our answer is um, the story of us, it's us. Um, it's those of us that have a small business that um, due to globalization and changes goes under. It's those of us um, that have a severe medical issue and have a bankruptcy, which is medical bank medical debt is still the number one cause of a bankruptcy filings. So really one is to help us understand that it's the story of us. Um, the second is that we've done a lot of close listening to people that either have experienced housing insecurity in the past or who are currently experiencing it to talk about what would be helpful. So an obvious thing is more housing, right? So that, that's a clear, obvious thing. But other things that aren't quite so clear um, are things like, let's say, um, 
you know, you're applying for five different apartments that are open and you make five different $60 application fees and then you make five different $50 background check fees, um, by that point in time, you've spent a lot of money um, for units that uh, get snapped up that you may never get. So one of our projects is to look, and um, we've been talking with um, landlords and renters about this, really a streamlined single point of application and single point of background check so that um, you know I could file a $100 fee and have my application go to six different units um, and that's better than a $600 fee. So that's one key piece that we've listened to um, from folks. The second key piece is, that makes it really hard to get into housing that we're working on is the ability to have, usually you have to have three months rent, um, a, that the equivalent of three months rent that goes into um, a guarantee uh, for landlords, that's fairly common. So we're working um, with a program called One Up out of Portland um, and some seed funding to look at how this um, entity might provide a guarantee for three months meant to help people get started. Maybe they have enough to pay the monthly rent, but they don't have enough saved up for that three months rent. So that's another program that we're um, looking at. We've also looked, uh, one of our projects is, we talked about the housing needs analysis in La Grande, um, but the small communities, Elgin, Embler, Cove, uh, North Powder and Union, were under 10,000 individuals and didn't receive any funding from the state to do a housing needs analysis. So we're in the process of partnering with those communities to seek grant funding to try and do a housing needs analysis for them. That housing needs analysis is important because if you're applying as a as a city for funding to help aid in development um, or you're looking at doing incentives for development you have to have that study done um, in order to do that legally um, so that's that's kind of a, a third area that we're focusing on and a fourth area that we've really been focusing on is support for people moving into housing so if you have not owned a home and you're suddenly renting a home um, it can be a little bit overwhelming to figure out things like maintenance and yard care and um, the budgeting pieces that go along with all that. And so we call those housing support services. Um, and that's to help folks who have had some instability really figure out um, all the pieces and how to get those in order um, and on time in order to be a successful renter and eventually a successful owner. So those are the, um, and, and I guess a final thing um, that we do is we really help support housing uh, developers. So for example, the veterans um, village that is being uh, built by a local developer, we partnered with them, helped them write a grant to the, went to the state, helped them talk about community services, community partners, we're helping them start an advisory committee. So we provide assistance to developers um, so that it's possible for them to get some state funding that require community partnerships. Awesome. Well, that is, I mean, that that's a lot. And that is, uh, I can certainly relate and understand, you know, every one of those situations, you know, I, uh, so I, I, you know, we've, uh, we're in a business, you know, we're, we're blessed to own the home that we're in, but, mm -hmm. you know, every time we've moved to a commercial location, there was, uh, you know, an advanced rent that had to be paid. And, That's and even, yeah, yeah. And even for a business that is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's a chunk. That's a, that's an obligation that is just hard to under, to, to, so I can only understand. I can, you know, I can totally relate to that. So, well, well, Lisa, this sounds great. So if people want more information about housing matters, you guys do have a website. What is that? So our website is www.hmucoregon.org. Um, you can find information about Housing Matters there. Uh, you can also find information about our monthly meetings, which are open to anyone in the county who's interested in coming. Right now they're Zoom meetings, uh, but information is posted there and contact information to reach some of us at Housing Matters if you would like to know more. Excellent. Well, Lisa, thank you for taking the time and uh, thanks for letting us 
uh, our production side of us assist you with the video that we did. It was a very enjoyable pro uh, process. And I, and I should say that uh, my producer, uh, Bennett Welch, is the one who kind of took that on. Uh, we had the original story and, and had it visualized, but he is the one who put it together. And he really put a lot of himself in that. It's, so, it's a beautiful video and it's, yeah. we, we find it really touching every time we watch it, um, probably because we actually know, you know, the real person who's involved in that. And, and so we're grateful for the partnership with you to sort of get, we hope to be getting more stories out um, to show more of the shape um, of what housing needs look like and housing successes, what they look like. Yeah. And this, uh, this, this interview here is the first part of a, social media campaign that will be coming out uh, based upon that that story. And so people will be seeing uh, clips or smaller, uh, that story condensed in smaller bite-sized pieces. And so uh, thanks so much for letting us help you with that. And what yeah, a compelling story. You. Yeah. Yes, well, thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Eastern Oregon for tuning in and we will see you next time right here on EO Live.